We fight how we train. Why Devin the Dream has no power. We're also going to be talking about pound for pound. We're going to be talking about a couple of fight tactics, some things that went on in the fight, um, and how you can get one punch knockout power and you can fix all the things that are wrong with Devin Haney here. Okay, so first off, we're going to be taking a look at Devin Haney and when he throws, and what I like to call structure, we're going to be talking about his whole kinetic chain. And when he throws his punch, look at his back leg is kind of dragging. Okay, um, It's not actually making contact with the ground. So even though it looks like most of his technique here is correct, and it looks very good and clean and it was sharp, it's, he's not actually driving any weight into this punch. It's all arm punch. Um, there's a decent amount of force. Don't let Devin Haney arm punch you, right? Because Devin Haney's a big, strong guy. We saw how much, how much massively bigger he was than George Cambosis. And this small technical flaw here, and it's not a small flaw as we see, uh, made him go 12 rounds with Cambosis, a guy that he seemingly could, could hit at will. Okay? So we're going to talk about a couple of other little sequences here. Taking a step here, controlling the line. And now you can see his back leg here is in the air when he lands this punch again. He's not driving any weight into the punch. Even though his technique looks okay, it's all, all the momentum is driven from moving forward and taking the step rather than having any of the momentum driven from the ground, which is, again, where all of the momentum comes from, okay, is being able to drive your weight from the ground uh, and drive your weight into the punch. But again, Devin Haney's feet keep coming up, and we're going to talk about why he does this stuff. Now, here, uh, Cambosis is going to enter the line with his jab. Haney slips. He's going to throw his hook, and... Cambosis is going to be throwing a counter hook. So I want you guys to pay attention to the idea that his whole technique winds up being better. But Devin Haney's back leg and his front foot both come up off the ground when he throws this hook. And he gets hit with a counter hook by Cambosis. And Cambosis was easily able to stay on the line. And after landing the hook, peel and take a step off the line. Let's take a look, though, at what Devin Haney does instead. Okay? He slips. Beautiful. Gets his hook off. Beautiful. But now he gets hit with the hook because he's in the air. Both of his feet come off the ground. But then what is his absolute next defensive move? Well, he crouches and he gets under the line. He ducks below the waist. And the reason that he does this is because of the fact that his feet are constantly coming up off the ground when he throws his punches. It's the only way that he can get himself back to the ground so he can start moving his head again. And this is the reason why Devin Haney kind of has to cheat okay and again we're going to talk a bit a little bit more about the tactics um and then i'm going to show you guys why he does this stuff here we go again here's the right the right hand beautiful now i talked about it in the first fight if he could hit cambosis with the jab why couldn't he hit him with the one two and in this fight i actually thought he did a beautiful job of doing other things than ducking below the waist and making it a, a more competitive fight uh, i thought that he fought pretty well pretty well again the problems in his technique, uh, which, again, we're going to take a look at in his training in just a minute. Um, is this the clip here? No. So we're going to pause on this clip here. We're going to start looking at some training. But one of the, the pieces of equipment I wanted to take a look at, again, see him spinning and rotating? But his back leg comes up off the ground each time he does this little exercise, right? So he's not actually driving any weight or learning to really punch with his legs. And this is one of the reasons why he has these kind of skinny chicken legs. Now, this is not a bad exercise, okay? There's something to learn here, as there is, it is important to have a dichotomy between understanding which muscles are going to be pushing when you punch and which ones are going to be pulling. Now, if you guys want to learn the absolute best way to learn that stuff, check out the Phelps Boxing Combat System. Uh, I have a shadow boxing mastery system on dynamic striking. Link's in the description. It's going to teach you how to learn how to do this stuff, but it's also going to teach you how to do it while you're still able to drive from the ground correctly in order to do this and make them punches, not just an exercise, okay? Uh, I call it pendulum boxing, pendulum shadow boxing exercises. Um, they're going to teach you how to generate momentum with your entire body so that you can learn to punch with your entire body, okay? And again, if you can't keep your back leg on the ground when you throw a right hand, you're not really getting any weight into your punch, Okay? You're not going to have a very strong snap um, because you're not going to have any weight behind it. Uh, now, we're going to take a look at a, actually a bunch of other exercises too. Here's another one. As we take a look at, this is a very, very 
seemingly impressive video if you see it and you hear it with the sound bah, 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 ah, you know and it's real fast and slappy and you know and it's it sounds good it looks good right it's flashy but if we take a look at his back leg it's constantly coming up off the ground with each punch he is practicing this and it does look fancy and it does look flashy but this drill is a waste of his time it's literally making him worse at boxing because he has no structure to it He's just kind of doing whatever he wants. He's not challenging himself. Well, maybe the challenge is in the speed, right? Sure, if you can get value out of it, I guess. No, not really. Because you can do things, you can do so many other things to challenge yourself with correct body mechanics to make sure you actually get stuff out of your workouts, okay? And again, he's not moving his head, right? Most of this is very, very light head movement, very light, very light. His head's still really high. So his feet shouldn't really be moving. You can all move your head from your left knee to your right knee without moving your feet at all, right? And he's not even doing that much. So his feet shouldn't be moving that much. Now, there's a better video we're going to take a look at in terms of here of pad work, but again, taking a step with the right hand, okay? Moving around, taking a step with the left hook here, okay? Very very bad technique here taking a step with the right hand. As we can see here, his left hand is down. His head didn't move at all. Very poor technique. And the worst part, this double end bag is easy work. This thing is slow. There's no tension on this thing. It's not going to get away from you. It's a really, really easy bag to be hitting and to be working on. <clears throat> now, we're not going to sit here and watch all of his double end bag work uh, because... You know, it's a waste of time. We saw some of his failings there. Um, but we're going to take a look at a little bit of his pad work here. Stepping with these punches here. Step, step, step. Nothing wrong with that. Tries to throw a right hand. And now look at his back leg coming off the ground as he steps with the right hand. He's not actually able to drive any weight from, from his punches, from the ground, into his punches. Um, and again, there are a few trainers that teach this stuff. Um, not only stepping on the balls, right? Is this a step or is this a punch? People who teach stepping on the balls of your feet um, or stepping with every punch, uh, it's really bad for you, okay? There's a time and place for learning the mechanics of what they're trying to teach, but it's not with punching, okay? Um, and as we can see here, Devin Haney's going to have a lot of these kind of problems here where he's kind of moving his feet, again, stepping here with that punch. And another thing that I want to point out, uh, his left hooks, when he throws his left hooks, stepping with the uppercut here, Stepping with the right hand here. When he throws the left hooks, he never gets on the ball of the front foot. And that's a really interesting thing too. Again, he doesn't really use his feet to punch at all. It's all arm punches. Um, and again, that's why his chest and his abs are just so insane. Like his body up top is just incredible. His arms are super, they're jacked. They were literally twice the size of Cambosis. But that's not where power comes from, okay? We can see through the rotations of these sequences here, always stepping with his punches, always moving his feet, even with the punches that, that don't require it, even the ones that he wants to get power in. Okay, now, if you guys want to know all the secrets to power, you want to understand the absolute best way to practice your best punches, I will teach you. If you want to know the absolute best way to throw every punch in boxing, the absolute best structure, the absolute best way to practice them, to generate power, to learn power, if you want to learn how to throw your best punch, check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System. Not only will I teach you how to throw your best punch, I will teach you how to improve it by massive margins and all very easy, very simple stuff. It's going to require uh, hard work, okay? It's not, it's simple, it's not easy, you still have to work hard, but all the hard work is done, okay? All the thinking, all the stuff, all you have to do is do the very basic looking drills, okay? Practice them the way that I tell you to practice them. Again, that's one of the problems with Haney is he just does whatever he wants because no one in his camp can do what he can do, okay? Interestingly enough, that's the the most funny thing that people say when they meet me in person, they're like, wow, you can actually do all this stuff that you say you can do. 
you can actually do all the stuff you're teaching. Okay? That's like the, and it looks different in person. Okay? But as you can see here, the Fouch Boxing Combat System, I'm going to teach you how to do all this stuff. And the best part, the weaponizing the one-inch punch introduction. Not only am I going to prove it, in the first 10 minutes of this video, I'm going to prove exactly what I'm going to teach you in the system. Okay? But you are going to believe it within the first 10 minutes. Do you understand? That you will have one punch knockout power. Now, in the video here, uh, it says like what's going on in the video series here, right? This stuff. Uh, they wouldn't let me put what I wanted to put here. I wanted to say one punch knockout power guaranteed. This boxing course is going to change the history of boxing forever. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. When it teaches you how to have Naoya Inoue like power. Now, when you guys see this the system, you're going to realize that Naoya Inoue sucks. He's not nearly as good as he should be. Okay? You're going to realize all the stuff that I've been saying is true all along. Because you're going to understand how power really works. I'm going to teach you everything you need to do with your kinetic chain. Okay? All the things that Devin Haney is doing wrong. A guy that jacked can't knock out a little kid like Cambosis? You see how skinny that dude is? And here's the thing. 200 bucks, 100% money back guarantee. Okay? Here's also some uh, additional reviews. Okay? Ones that talk about actually the techniques and they talk other stuff um, that I can't share here. But check out the reviews. So far, four reviews. Five stars. Nothing like it. Pure gold. Ah, very analytical and evidence-based approach. Do you guys know what that means? That means I'm going to show you again in the first 10 minutes of that video exactly what I'm going to teach you, exactly how it all works. I'm going to teach you the, Ryan, the secrets to Ryan Garcia's left hook. Everyone in the world can have a left hook like that in six months. And you don't need... You know what you don't need? You don't need all this fancy equipment. You don't need a coach holding the bag for you. You don't need a coach holding the mitts for you. You don't need a coach holding the mitts for you. <laughs> you don't need a double end bag. It would help. You don't need one of these machines. You don't need one, any weights. You don't need dumbbells and giant facilities to go running and doing your track drills. You don't need these machines. You don't need this piece of shit. All the waste... All you need is a heavy bag, and I will teach you how to drill your best punch, and then I will teach you how to make your best punch better. Not only am I going to teach you how to your best punch, I'm going to teach you how to make all your punches your best punches, and then I'm going to teach you how to weaponize your best punches and learn to use them for boxing. And it's not going to be where you get in the, you go into the gym and you practice your best donkey punch and you know, God damn, I could never land this in a punch. No. I'm going to 100% show you how it works so that you can not only practice your best goddamn punch, but I'm going to teach you how to hit someone with it too. Guaranteed. Okay? Or your money back. Check it out. I'm really proud of it. Again, I am the greatest boxing combat striking coach of all time. Okay? The greatest boxing mind of our generation. Guaranteed. Go check out how to learn how to do this stuff on your own. Okay? Guaranteed. And uh, another thing, I guarantee Devin Haney's team is going to be checking it out. Guarantee. Okay? So check it out. Dynamicstriking.com. Check out the reviews. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, to be honest, I hate this part. The selling stuff. It's not my favorite part. Uh, so now... We're going to go talk some shit about Devin Haney. I know that's what you guys have been waiting for. So let's talk some shit about Devin Haney here. Was the fight any different? Is Devin Haney pound for pound? Well, number one, you don't get pound for pound by beating some guy who's not on the pound for pound list, you dumbass. And number two, you don't get on the list by beating him twice. What? What are you talking about? Why would that make any sense? Okay, so anyway, let's take a look at these pound-for-pound pound skills here. He just jumped into the line, stepping in with a jab. He's going to get slip countered, okay? Uh, he's kind of getting this blocked a little bit, and then the left hook is coming. Where did Devin Haney go? Does anybody, has anybody seen him? 
Oh, he did that thing where he jumps and he has both all of his weight in the air because he doesn't know how punch mechanics work. And now he has to cheat to defend himself. So now he's cheating and he comes up and he's grabbing his opponent by the waist, puts his own head under his opponent's arm. And now he's going to come up and he's going to pretend like it was his opponent's fault. Okay, great fight. Okay, next clip. Actually, I don't know where we were here. Okay, not there. Not here. Was it this one? Okay. Next clip. What happened here? Dip. Cambosis gets on the line, slips to the front foot. Haney slips to the line, uh, slips to the front foot, and Haney grabs him, wraps his arm around him. Have you ever seen anything like this? No punches were thrown. And this is his strategy. No punches, okay? Is that pound for pound? Like, again, let's talk about the idea of pound for pound. Devin Haney thinks that nobody, his weight, that could make his weight, could fuck with him. That's what he's saying by saying pound for pound. Anyone, any size who can make my weight, I can beat them, right? Or if he was any weight class, he could beat them. Like if he fought Oleksandr Usyk and he was a 200-pound guy, say in, in relation, even if he was taller, you guys think he could beat Usyk? Or Crawford? Canelo? I don't actually know who else is on other people's pound-for-pounds lists. <laughs> Struggling a little bit, but... The fact that he's so much goddamn bigger than this guy and he couldn't drop Cambosis. Cambosis, you know, we've seen him be dropped by Tifimo Lopez, so we know he doesn't hit as hard as Lopez, but it, he looks bigger too. Anyway, are these pound for pound skills, guys? Nah. Here's a good clip. Again, jab, ducking below the waist again, comes up here grabbing and now he's gonna rip himself through the line and try to find a way to get offense here after he cheated here grabbed him by the waist again is this boxing guys is this part of the plan okay and now he wants to come up like he's all angry like he's all like he's the one been wronged you know it just blows my mind now this is a really interesting clip okay because this is in the first round cambosis is doing his shifting thing he shoots his right hand catches haney on the chin uh, maybe he doesn't catch him. It doesn't matter. Let's see. I thought he caught him at first. Yeah, I think he touched him just barely. Rolls under the line this way. And now he's getting controlled by Ken by uh, Haney, which is fine for a beat. Keeps holding. Okay, he's keep holding. Okay, keeps holding. Okay. Now he just straight up puts him in a headlock because his opponent got a better position on him. So now, again, pound for pound, right? Can Haney do this to someone who's as, as big as him, who weighs as much as he does? The, the whole idea of, of saying that you're pound for pound and you get in the ring and you're 15 pounds heavier than your opponent and you can't knock him out and you want to talk and you put him in headlocks. Like, not only are you trying to pretend like you're a pound for pound fighter, but you absolutely have to use your size in the ring to make sure that you don't fall out of position. And it's the only thing that saves him against a much smaller fighter. Okay? Okay. And uh, he's going to hold him in this headlock for four seconds here. Okay? Still holding. Still holding. Okay? Still holding. Still holding. The referee's already said stop. He's still holding him in a headlock. Still holding him in a headlock. The referee already told him to let go. You can see that he's still pressing down on his head. Again, trying to wrestle and trying to drain the smaller fighter. Holding him in a headlock here. And he still couldn't stop him. Now, I know you're saying that's like only one time. I know, I know. Okay, all right. Well, we'll take another look. Here it is in the first round again. This is a nine-second clip here. The jab comes. Cambosis gets by. Ducks with the front foot. Slipping to the front foot. He's not below the waist. Coming up. Shifting. Rolling. Gets around Devin Haney's jab. Off of Devin Haney's attacks. Lands an excellent attack. Beautiful work. And Devin Haney is putting him in a headlock again. This is his defense, right? Now he has him in a full-blown headlock. He just punched him after putting him in a headlock, which is literally cheating. There's nothing any of you people in the comments can say to say that that is not blatant cheating. Okay? 
A clinch is when you grab somebody's arm. Holding is when you grab somebody's body or their head. You are not allowed to do that ever under any circumstances. That is not part of the clinch. That is holding. Right? Clinching and holding are different. Clinching, you are manually controlling your opponent's tools. Okay? You cannot manually control your opponent's head. I mean, kind of like a little bit, sometimes a little bit, right? For one beat, right? Make it look like an accident, right? So, okay, so we're going to go, okay? It's uh, 31 seconds, okay? 31 seconds, 30 seconds. The referee already said stop, okay? Still holding him, still holding him. Hasn't released his neck, hasn't released his neck. 29 seconds, 27 seconds, okay? Still holding his neck, still holding his neck. The referee's... And it's even worse. It's even tighter. And look how fucking big and strong Devin Haney is. Is this fucking Ben Askren? Right? You guys remember when he put Robbie Lawler? He didn't even have to get it around his neck. He's just squeezing and putting pressure on his head. You got this big, giant, cheating weight bully who spends more time in the gym working out instead of boxing. And that's why his fucking punch technique still sucks. Because his, the exercises and the things he do, they do not relate to boxing. Check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System, Shadow Boxing Mastery. Everything you do in there is related to boxing. Is a boxing workout. Will get you sore and tired doing boxing shit. The Fouts Boxing Combat System. You don't need weights. You will get such incredible burns. You will get such an incredible workout. You're going to think you broke your arms. And that's much better than having to put some guy in a fucking headlock because your punch technique is so bad that you have to cheat. You have to cheat constantly. Okay? How many seconds went by that he had this guy in a, in a headlock? Five seconds. Five seconds in a fight. Again, Devin Haney is not a fighter. Everything that he's doing is trying to, to wear you down by wrestling you. Putting you in bad positions. Making you reach, ducking below the waist, grabbing. All because he's trying to use his little bit of speed that he gets from the rotation. Because he's fast, right? When he throws that jab, and we could take a look on the one of the training ones. I've got it open. He'll throw a jab here. He'll throw the jab. Where's that jab at? Here he is. Perfect. So he's going to go from this position here. He's going to have his weight here. So he's going to be taking a step. And look at his right arm. He shoots the shot, shoots the left arm, right? The right shoulder is forward, and then the left shoulder comes forward. And it's very slight. Boom, right shoulder, that's fine. The rotation, it's very linear, and now it's not linear. Because he's using a little bit of that, mo that motion that he, uses, he gets from that machine to pull his shoulders back. But again, his head is not moving. Okay? <clears throat> so he's fast. He can explode into stuff really quickly. Okay? And he's looking to capitalize on that by doing that move faster than you can do anything else. And then holding and grabbing and wearing you down. And then acting like he's a pound for pound fight. A pound for pound great fighter. And uh, I think, well, I think that he, not only is he going to get smoked when he starts fighting at 140. But if he doesn't move up to 140 and avoid Lomachenko, it's going to happen at Lom it's going to happen against Lomachenko. The only thing that Devin Haney can do, okay, and this is what he's going to do, okay, guaranteed. He's going to say he's going to move up to 140 because uh, all the fighters at 135, nobody wanted to fight him. Nobody wanted to make a deal because all the deals are going to be priced out because he has the belts. He defended them once, whatever, whatever. And then he's going to move up to 140. Oh, or he'll fight, a, he'll fight a tomato can one time and then move up to 140 and then do the same thing. Pretending like nobody wants to fight at 140 so he can get one trinket belt. I mean, I think all the belts are together right now. Maybe they got dispersed. But uh, Devin Haney's not ready. He's not ready for those guys that are going to be his size. Um, he hasn't gotten good enough at boxing to be able to do anything but use his size. And I don't think he's going to have the same size advantage at 140 um, as he's enjoyed at 135. 
Um, I mean, just imagine, you guys. Just imagine. You guys think this guy could beat Regis Progray? 